know, just a couple of weeks ago, many folks were really surprised by the outcome of the heavyweight championship boxing match between Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield. That fight was one of many turning points in Evander's life. What would you say were the top three turning points in your life? Well, you know, uh, I guess, you know, my belief in Christ and uh, I guess marriage and, and the point of having kids. It was a turning point for you to come out of retirement and go back into boxing. Was there something that triggered that move? Well, well, yes. Uh, the first time I retired, I retired because I was, I was hurt. I was embarrassed when Red Bull beat me the first time. And, and the turning point is that I knew that at some point in time I was going to have to talk to my son because I've, I realized that in his life he's going to have some things where he fell at. But the point is is that when you, when you fall short, you have to get back up. And once again, heavyweight champion of the world from Atlanta, Georgia, Evander Hill. What has family done to you? When I say family, I, you know, I, look at that. The smile comes on your face. There's a warmth in your glow. Well, you know, family is all that I have. You know, one thing I can say, we wasn't, we wasn't brought up with a lot of money. But one thing I can say at home with my mother, my sisters, and my brother, and I feel that the man that I am is because of my, my older sisters and my brothers. And your beeper. <laughs> Who's beeping you, Evander? Yeah, well, let's see. Jay Larkin for Showtime. For Showtime. Well, you tell him to wait. You're talking to Rolanda. I just turned it off. <laughs> <laughs> let me ask you this. A lot of people said the fight with Mike Tyson, what it symbolized for a lot of people that I, that I have spoken with, is um, almost in a strange kind of way, good versus evil. Uh, beyond the fight, it was here is Evander, a family man, uh, who respects women, who uh, is raising his family, he's, he's coming out of the ring, he believes in the Lord, and Mike, who has had some problems, particularly when it comes to respecting women, a convicted rapist. Did you have to deal with some of that? A lot of people did say that, but you know, I was trying to get them to see that is it right when a person was raised different, meaning that I was blessed to have a mother and sisters and brothers, and I was blessed to be around a lot of people who instilled a lot of love. What, what was your mother like? Well, my mother, my mother, <laughs> my mother was strong, and I and I think it that it made me as a man strong. Ever since I had a job, I always supported my mother the best way I could. I bought my mother a house, and people say, "Well, you bought your mother a house and bought yourself a condo." And they ask me why. I said, because if I had to ever move, I knew I could move in with my mother. <laughs> I mean, you know, a lot of people may leave you, but your mother going to be there. You know, my mother loved me and would gone if I would have been a champ or if I would have been a chump. In a stunning upset, the new WBA heavyweight champion of the world, Evander. The were you raising a lot of strict discipline? Or were you ever bullied as a kid? Did anybody mess with you as a kid? Well, then nobody never messed with me outside the house, but <laughs> I had to do everything that my sister them would tell me to do. And uh, then once I got into boxing, boxing was something that I was always scared of, and I was always praying, Lord, why I'm up in this ring? And it took me for until I was 17 years old to get over the fear of boxing. You were afraid of boxing? Yes. So is this whole career to overcome one of your biggest fears? Well, with it, I overcame the fear at the age of 17, but I think the most important thing is that the Lord allowed me to do this to have a testimony to, to be able to speak to people about overcoming fear, because fear is the only thing that prohibits you from being the very best in your life. Our whole show is about turning points in life, and you've had a lot of turning points. You just got married. What made you make the decision to pop the question? Well, I, you know, I've been wanting to get married since I got a divorce. And, and I realized that, you know, I, I wasn't a guy to be single. You know, I, I needed a woman in my life to balance. Are you somebody who gets big diamond rings for people and baubles and yes. cars and houses and... Yes. I'm, I'm one of them type of people that anything our heart desires, she would get it before she die. 
I just, that's just the way I am. Anything that she ever dreamed about, even think about for his gifts, I, w I would give it to her. What do you expect from your soulmate? All I expect for her to just love me and just respect and honor me. And, and that's it. The whole thing is that that's all I ask for a woman. Mm. Do you have any idea how good looking you are? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. You're not just a pretty face, Evander. Well, no, it's more than me than than face, body, and talent. And you know, the big part is is the word of God. During my conversation with Evander Holyfield, I asked him if he thought his victory might be a turning point for Mike Tyson as well. Here's what he had to say. Well, I, I, I hope that it is because, you know, when I look at Mike Tyson, he's not a person that cannot be changed. But, you know, he has to be willing himself. Do you ever spend time with him, like one-on-one? -on -one? I, I haven't in a long time. If you were to spend an afternoon with him, like brother to brother, like he's your little brother, what would you talk to him about? Well, I would talk to him about love. I'm, you know, being with people for the right reason. But the point is to, for a person to find themselves, to know who they are. See, once you know who you are, then, then you don't have to have certain type of friends, certain people, because you know that you're the man of your life, and, and you have to live by the decision that you make, which is good and bad. You never know that you made a wrong decision to, to till you get down the road, but it's better to be moving in a direction than to be still. Evander Holyfield is quite a dad. Try to imagine if your dad was Evander Holyfield and you were about to get a spanking. I think I'd be walking the straight and narrow, but Evander's kids still occasionally cross that line as kids will do. The question is, how does Evander Holyfield handle that? People ask me, do I hit them hard? And I tell them I hit them with all my might. And they say, why? I say, well, I won't have to do it again. And, you know, as hard as I hit my kids on their behind with that belt, I don't have to do it on a daily basis. Been, we spent some time with Evander Holyfield and talked about some of the trying, tough times in his life. But there are also some many great joys as well. Evander invited me to visit him and his family at his lovely home, his compound, you might say, down in Atlanta. Evander Holyfield is just completing construction of his new 54,000 square foot home. It sits on 180 acres of rolling hills outside of Atlanta, Georgia. Inside his dream house, he has built a movie theater, bowling alley, racquetball court, 13 bedrooms and elevators to get you from the first to third floor. On top of all of that, Evander has the largest pool I know that I have ever seen, and he claims his new home is the third largest in the United States. But aside from all of these luxuries, Evander's life is not just about spending his newfound fortune. He takes great pride in his six children, his brand new wife, Janice, and his faith in God. six. Oh, Evan. Who usually wins the game? That's what I want to know. Daddy. Daddy always wins. <laughs> no, Daddy's not supposed to win. I win sometimes. You win. I have six kids. Uh, Evander Jr. is 12. Yvette is 11. Ebony is 8. Ewan is six, then Imani is three, and Eden is 15 months. Wait a minute. Do all of your children's names begin with an E? Yes. <laughs> Why did you decide to do that? Well, I'm Evander. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> I understand you had a very casual wedding. Yes. Evander we wore jeans. He actually, he, but he looked good in them. But he, he looked good in them. Now we know he looked good in his jeans. <laughs> How do you deal with the different mothers and all the children? Is that a sticky situation? Well, in, in some ways, in some ways, uh, you know, my first wife, I have three kids, three kids by her, and, and I guess after all the mother, you know, I have custody of them kids, and she let me do what I want to do. And with the other mothers and stuff, they, they kind of have a problem, uh, you know, in the way I discipline them and, and how I handle things. I got to ask you, do you spank your kids? Yes. You I, do? I don't spat a rod, not at all. Wait a minute, I, I can't imagine being a kid getting a spanking from Evander Holyfield. Well, they can, they can, uh, because that, you know. I, you don't I, think that's, now I know this may sound ridiculous, but you don't think that's too violent? Well, no, not at all, because I realize that the reason why my kids do, the, uh, do what I ask them to do because they don't want a spanking. And you know, it's, it's not fear, it's that reverence. And, and people ask me, do I hit them hard? And I tell them I hit them with all my might. And they say, why? I said, well, I won't have to do it again. 